Hello everyone, how's it going? Um, today I want to do a drawing for you uh, on folds and drapery. So the drawing is going to be done in just two pieces of uh, pastel, a black and white, and a Mars plastic eraser, and a retractable eraser, as well as a kneaded eraser. So come on over here. Okay, so you can see my uh, drapery that I have set up and that way you can follow along as I work on this. You can see uh, see what my reference is. And there are a number of ways I can begin here. And seeing as I'm working on white, um, I have two options. One is to do a light kind of dusting over the whole surface and then wipe it and then use primarily the eraser as the, the drawing tool. Uh, or I can go in and draw it out and map in the masses, the shadows, and kind of do the same treatment. The, the reason why I'm going to do the second actually is because I want to be able to see the whites. If I do a dusting everywhere, um, I won't be able to get this white back because uh, even though pastel is pretty malle malleable, uh, it will leave a memory. And so uh, I don't want that to happen, if possible. So what I'm going to begin with is, is, is sort of a gesture. I'm going to try and fit the whole drapery on here. But I've offset it. You see how I've offset it? because I want to have enough room for the shadow. What I like to do is I'm using the side of the pastel. So I'm drawing down the length of that. So I like to work from general to specific. Um, pretty much in everything I do, um, that's the case. Whether it's one of my uh, detailed and kind of refined paintings, I begin general or if it's something more gestural like this, I still start with a general approach. And what that entails is, is I begin with a contour and thinking primarily in terms of shapes and the movement, sort of the direction, the proportion, the angle of those shapes. Um, I don't want to get caught up. That's also a part of it. I don't want to get caught up in the details because at this point, I want to be kind of convinced that this is this is the structure I'm going to work from. And you can see uh, me starting to put the value in. I'm using the side of my pastel and really kind of laying in sort of a, a base coat. And at some point I'm going to rub this out. So it's not going to be, I'm not worried too much about the texture. Um, you don't have to if you were doing this on your own, you know, if you like the texture, if you like the surface, work with it. And that's, that's totally fine. There's no reason why you have to smooth it out. Um, I just, I like to start off general like this, wash it away and then repeat and then wash it away and then repeat again. That's sort of like, it's a process that I enjoy. What this does is it helps um, kind of unify it. And also I can begin using my eraser to pull the lights out. I'm not so confident with what's happening here yet. I want to, I want to stay on this for a little bit longer and, and kind of hone in on the structure a little bit better. And so you'll notice I've changed my, my, the way I hold this. It's a, a little more like a, you would normally hold a, a charcoal stick um, instead of with two fingers using the side I'm using the point. I'm using that point because it's it's more accurate. Now the thing about folds is that when it's a cast shadow um, the edge is usually sharp when it's a volumetric shadow, so it's when a shadow is describing the movement or the rounding of the drapery, a fold, it's soft. 
So if you look at the photo there on the right, you can see how it's softer here because it's a volumetric um, that shadow describes volume. And if your drapery seems to always be kind of angular and sharp, maybe that's maybe that's one thing that is missing. Okay, I first like to begin with a this Mars plastic eraser. Um, it it erases out really aggressively um, in kind of a linear fashion. So I can pull um, that, that material out back to the paper. So now anywhere where it's uh, straight white, where it's a direct light source is hitting, that's, that's what I'm erasing. And now I'm kind of fading that eraser out, pressing a little softer in order to blend it. Erasing out the lights is just another way of fixing your drawing, sort of honing in on the structures. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the background. Um, if I'm going to continue the drapery behind like this. It's important to start thinking about that, though, because um, it is all about relationships. And I don't want to I don't want to ignore this background um, for too long because I, it needs to be included in the composition. So um, I, I need to be thoughtful about that at some point here. And, and I may actually let it fade. So focus um, the detail and the finish more in the middle here and the knot and let everything else kind of fade out. So the way I'm going to, going to use white is that I'm going to use white as a, um, to create volume, not just as a highlighter. You know, I'm not going to, only add it where there's reflected light, it's actually going to be used to create uh, volume. So I end up putting white everywhere, kind of like I'm painting. So it's not only in the light, but it's also in the darks um, and the grays. So a mixture of white and black to make the gray. So seeing as I had the dark there already, um, I can add white over the top of it, use my finger to blend it and to make that gray. And what happens is the paper starts to, dis to disappear. And that's what I'm after. I want the paper to be essentially obliterated. So all you're seeing then is the surface the pastel surface. It should be very forgiving. So if you go too light, you can always add some more dark and then repeat. Add white, add black, add white, add black until you get the right value and the value that you're after. It's a shadow, but I cover it up and then I'm mixing that black in with the gray or with the white that I put down. Since darks recede in space and lights come forward, I'm trying to darken this more, uh, a little bit more than it really is for effect, so that this feels like it, um, almost like a flower petal. It, it recedes underneath this lip. The darker I make it, it's, it's, uh, you know, the darker I make it, the, the more it will recede. But there's a fine balance. I don't want to go so dark that it, there's an absence of light and it looks like a hole. Now I'm going to start putting in some of the background, but I've decided to keep it pretty faint. So that I want it to be really faint so that it has a, an atmosphere to it. If I just worked from top to bottom, left to right, and, and really rendered and made it really detailed every step of the way, the end result is pretty much given to you. You know what it's going to look like. Um, you also won't diverge at all from from the reference because you you have to rely on it. This way, I, I'm relying on my intuition and, and my my previous marks. And now I'm just trying to sharpen it a little bit more. Shapes. 
shapes of light, shapes of dark. Now I could go in with a pastel pencil into there and put a lot more specific shapes and edges and lines in. But in order to keep this consistent um, and balanced and, and loose, I'm going to try my, do my best with big kind of clunky uh, materials here. I'm going to have to approximate what it is that I see. And that, that is going to make it more exciting and interesting. And also, I have to distill the reference down. Distill it down to its basic essentials. Working this way, a little more um, loosely like this, I find that you, you allow the viewer to play a role in the work. It gives them enough, but there's still a sense of mystery that it's not all been spoon-fed to them. See how I'm mixing? And the uh, drapery seems to stand out from the background because the paper is now disappeared in a way. I mean, you still see the texture quite a bit where I only have, um, have one layer of pastel. But when I start to layer with both black and white together, it definitely feels more like it's a painting. And the roughness is, is a mood all, all in its own. And I'm trying to retain the roughness of it because I want it to feel, I want there to be an energy. It's not a photograph. And I want that energy to be, um, I want it to look handmade. And so it's a matter of when do you stop? I'm pretty far away from that. But it's definitely something I think about. And that's why I, I always build the whole surface up at once because I, uh, I want the work to be balanced and that actually leads me to a better understanding of when to stop. It's finding that balance between this detail and, and finished feel versus uh, the loose, the loose uh, mark and kind of alluding to what I'm seeing or the impression using my eraser to draw here. This is a, I'm not really committing here. I just want to see what it looks like. That's what I'm doing with the eraser. It's quite strange here. I, I thought I had a one directional light source hitting the uh, drapery, but I, I guess I don't. It's, there are multiple light sources, <clears throat> so I, I don't normally like um, a, uh, shadow that's right. It looks like a flash photography. You know, when flash photography, it'll cast a shadow right around the object. I don't normally like that. This is interesting, though. Um, it not, might not be something that you would see in a classical drawing, but it, it's visually uh, different. Sometimes if you use a paper towel, it'll blend a little bit better. Sometimes I'll actually draw on the towel itself. And what, the reason why I will do that is because it will make a, uh, a smoother application. It can be useful as an artist, I think, to use tools that limit you. Um, whether it's a limited palette, and so it forces you to mix colors you normally wouldn't mix, or um, find inventive ways around the color. And it's the same thing with this. It's, it's like using, um, staying away from the an actual pencil form makes makes me find clever ways of suggesting, reducing. Now I'm looking at the relationships between the bright lights and the mid-tones. Like what's the brightest thing on here? And so what I've done is I've, I've started darkening the folds, these folds, and instead lightening the space between. And so that's why I've lit those up, and to try and create a, um, a glow effect. The subject will glow more the more dark you start to put in, the more light you remove, as long as you're judicious with it 
you know, really kind of look at, be honest, and really look at what's light and what's not. For example, this fold doesn't, it's not the same light all the way across. It, to me, it looks darker here. And as it turns around, it becomes lighter. It makes sense, doesn't it? The light is going to touch some areas more than others, you know, in a, in a sharper, more distinct way, depending on where it is in space. Let's make this guy glow. You can do that by adding a little bit of light in the background here. But remember, I said I wanted to, this to be somewhat faded out. I don't want to draw attention to it. It's just it's a supporting role that it's playing. It has to be uh, sacrificed, really, <laughs> for the main protagonist here. So if I bring it out too much, it'll no longer be in the background. So the way to keep it back there is to um, soften the edge around it. That's one way. One way is to keep the value fairly dark. Another is to not render it or create volume like you do everywhere else, not to the same level but to leave it mysterious. If you've never drawn drapery before, I highly recommend it. If you can draw drapery, I believe you can draw anything because the techniques that you need to um, learn when drawing drapery can be transferred to the figure, a landscape. Um, this looks like a petal. Uh, a leaf. It also, if I turn it sideways, would have this rolling hill kind of quality to it. Also, it's a very figurative, like the folds in skin or, or someone's neck or, or smile. There are some specifics in um, the knot that I still want to put in, even though it's, it's a little difficult with, with this. I have, to, I have to put in enough detail that it makes it unique so that I know that I'm actually drawing what I'm seeing and not what I wish or think I'm seeing. I have a reflected light and then a core dark right here. And then this is the direct light right here. And then there's a dark on the other side right here, and then another light. But if I put a little bit of truth in here, as best I can, um, it's going to offer a lot more than what my mind will. What I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm putting dots in, dashes or dashes, and, and then I'm using my finger to uh, render it, or to pull those little bits of color or black into the rest of the piece. So there you have it. I hope you learned something. Drawing drapery folds and the illusion of light and volume with just black pastel and white pastel. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.